Hello and welcome back to Sorting Algorithms Redux. You are watching episode 12, the wrap up episode. Wrap up. It is time for us to finish off the entire series. It's been a really crazy month. We've had four episodes per week for the past three weeks or so, which has allowed us to cover 12 episodes of content. Let us now review what we've covered so far, starting from the first episode. In episode one, we took a look at time complexity. We had to understand what it means for an algorithm to be efficient or not efficient. We do that, of course, by measuring the time it takes to complete the sorting process. We have, of course, learned in the later videos what sort of time complexity we would expect from an efficient algorithm and a not so efficient one. For example, an algorithm that runs with n squared time is never as efficient as an algorithm that completes in n log n time. That's not to say things won't be different when it comes to different sets of input data. Most algorithms actually fare differently depending on what data you give it. That's why we have to consider the best, average, and worst case scenario. Some algorithms can actually take a look at a list and decide that it's sorted. This is of course the best case and normally takes O n time if an algorithm is actually aware that a list is sorted. On the other hand, the worst case scenario for most sorting algorithms is when you actually give it a list that is inversely sorted. Even for some efficient algorithms, the time required for this is actually O n squared. Even for some of the more efficient algorithms, the worst case time complexity may still be n squared. The average case time complexity of course refers to the time when a randomly sorted list is given to the algorithm. We moved on to look at selection sort, one of the most intuitive sorting algorithms. Selection sort is really simple, which is why I chose to open the series with that. It works by selecting the smallest element and putting it to the front of the list. It then looks at the remainder of the list and pulls out the next smallest item. This repeats again and again until the list becomes sorted. We then moved on to look at bubble sort, the sorting algorithm which repeatedly swaps neighbors, pushing larger numbers to the right. We noted that that wasn't very efficient, but we tried to make it better because we realized that when bubble sort runs from left to right and doesn't make a single swap, the list is actually sorted. That wasn't enough, however, so we went on to look at the cocktail sort. Instead of only pushing the large items in one direction, we decided to move backwards so as to push the small items in the other direction. Unfortunately, this does not really give us true improvement with regard to the performance of the algorithm. However, in most cases, we do save a little bit of time. After that, we jumped on to look at insertion sort, the sorting algorithm that completes in one pass. Unfortunately, much of the repetition is actually veiled in a form of popping out an item and moving it backwards along the list. While insertion sort is, in general, slightly more efficient than the previous sorting algorithms that we've encountered, insertion sort still takes n squared time. We then moved on to look at bucket sort, a sorting algorithm which is in fact quite a bit more in-depth than I had covered in my video. However, the premise in which all this is based on is simple. We create multiple little buckets and we sort each of these buckets, resulting in fewer comparisons overall. We then took a break from looking at sorting algorithms and we went to look at recursion. Recursion is a programming concept in which a function actually calls itself at some point within its own coding. I chose to bring up this topic because the next couple of sorting algorithms actually rely heavily on recursion. At some point, I also introduced to you the term divide and conquer. Most of the more efficient algorithms actually divide up a list and work on them separately, eventually joining them back to give you a sorted list. In order to carry out this divide and conquer method, most algorithms rely on recursion. In the very next episode, we had an example of this. We took a look at quick sort. This sorting algorithm picks a random pivot and by the time it's done, we get two sublists. This is the perfect example of dividing and conquering. Each one of these sublists are then recursively sorted with quicksort. This causes more and more sublists to be formed, and eventually, the 10 to size 1, everything gets put back together, and we have a sorted list. I thought I'd lighten things up a little by showing you how to quicksort a deck of cards. Knowing how to perform quicksort on physical items is actually pretty useful. If you have papers or letters or stuff like that that you actually want to sort out, it's actually a very useful technique. We don't strictly follow the quicksort procedure, as in I never had a left or a right pointer, 
and I never did the whole moving towards each other thing when sorting a deck of cards. However, we apply what is conceptually similar to Quicksort itself, by grabbing my deck of cards, picking a random pivot, and sorting the rest of the cards to its left and right, forming two sublists. I then do the same recursively for each of these sublists. By dividing and conquering my stack of 52 cards, I managed to get things sorted in a relatively quick time. This would have been extremely time consuming if I actually did it intuitively. In the next episode, we moved on to look at merging. Not a sorting algorithm, but a very simple way to actually merge two sorted lists such that the result remains sorted. We use this as a foundation for the next episode, which is Merge Sort. Incidentally, my favorite sorting algorithm of all, Merge Sort actually breaks down a list into sublists of size 1. It then merges each of these pairs of lists together, eventually forming a final sorted list. I showed you the power of Merge Sort in the sense that it doesn't actually care what information it gets, it's going to break down whatever data it gets in the exact same way. It would then reassemble the lot and put everything back together to give you a sorted list. Once again, blind to the contents of the input array. We then very briefly actually touched upon a comparison between Merge Sort and Quick Sort. We came to the conclusion that Quick Sort is in general more preferred because it has a smaller space complexity. In other words, recursive copies of Quick Sort are only made when necessary. This is as opposed to Merge Sort, which creates the same number each time, blind to whatever data it gets and it needs to create as many copies of itself as there are items in the array. And that's it, that wraps up the entire season. We have covered pretty much all of the more popular sorting algorithms. For those of you who came from my older series of videos, you'll realize of course that I dropped a number of sorting algorithms from this series. In particular, I did not cover binary trees or tree sorts, I did not cover strand sort, and most sadly, I did not cover bogo sort. If you are really interested for me to actually cover some of these or something that I did not cover, please do leave me a comment in the comment section below. In fact, let me know what you thought of the entire series. If there's anything you'd like me to change or add on, I will of course listen to all your suggestions and I'll try to carry out as much as I can. But well, that wraps it up for this wrap up video. But well, that wraps up this entire series of videos. I hope you enjoyed watching Sorting Algorithms Redux. I hope you learned something from the series, and in particular, I hope you benefited from the improved format, the better audio, and hopefully the slightly more organized visuals. Once again, if you have any comments, queries, or suggestions, I would be really glad to hear them. Please leave a comment in the comment section below, and I'll do my very best to read and reply to each and every one of the comments. I will of course appreciate every like, favorite, and subscription you give me. But once again, that is all there is for this episode and this entire series. Until next time, you're watching 0612TV.